So in the last two lectures of this course, we will prove Risson's metrization theorem. So this theorem tells us uh, that if we put certain conditions on a topological space X, then uh, in the topology it actually comes from it. Right? So first we begin with some preliminaries. So lemma let X be a metric space. and define a function d prime. So we want to change the metric on x right? as follows by d prime of x comma y is equal to minimum of d of x comma y comma 1. So here D is the metric. Where D is the metric on X. Okay. So uh, then D prime is a metric on X and induces the same topology. As D. Okay, so let's prove this. So the check that D prime is a metric, so is a metric, is left as an exercise. Okay, so let's assume that D prime is a metric, and uh, the open balls. d prime x comma r are the same b d x comma r the open balls are the same when r is strictly decimal right and since open balls of this type form a basis for the topology on x, this implies that both generate the same topology. So I mean d prime is a metric, so it generates a topology and d is a metric, so it generates a topology. So a basis for the topology generated by d is given by open balls of this type and a basis for the topology generated by d prime is given by open balls of this type when r is strictly less than 1, right? So therefore both these are the same and therefore the topology is the same. Are the same. Right? So this proves so this proves the lemma. Okay. So let us take the real line with the standard metric. And we apply this construction to this and apply the above lemma. Right? So then we get that uh, d prime x comma y defined to be minimum of the absolute value of x minus y comma 1 defines a metric on R which induces the standard topology. Okay. Now uh, we will use this metric d prime. So we will use this to define a metric on Rn or index by natural numbers, right? So this is the countable product. So let me write it as Xn, right? Where each Xn is equal to 
R with the standard topology. Right? And this product has the product topology as always. Right? Okay. So we define the following metric. So define d of x comma y. So for we take two vectors x and y in this R n and we define this d as supremum among all natural numbers d prime x n comma y n divided by n. Okay. So this supremum obviously exists because each of these d primes is less than or equal to 1, right? So yeah. Okay, so lemma. First we need to show that this actually defines a metric on Rn, right? The function d defines a metric on Rn. Okay, so proof. Clearly, uh, this holds, this is the second condition for defining a metric. This obviously holds, this is clear from the definition. And suppose if x is equal to y, then obviously the, the, the d of x comma y is 0. And conversely, if this is 0, then this implies that the supremum d prime xn comma yn by n is equal to 0. So this implies that each of these is less than or equal to 0. Yeah, but that implies that d prime xn comma yn is equal to 0, which implies that xn is equal to yn. This implies right. So we are only left to prove the triangle inequality. So this condition also holds. Right. So let's prove the triangle inequality. So let we take three points. Right. So then we have d prime. Since d prime is a metric. We have the usual triangle inequality and which is divided by n. Right. So now using supremum of a i plus b i is less than or equal to supremum of a i plus supremum of b i. So using this relation we get so when we take supremo over here, we get d of x comma y is less than or equal to d of x comma z plus d of y comma z. Right. So this implies that d defines metric. And the main theorem we will prove in this lecture is the following. This is the first step towards proving Ulisson's metrization theorem. So the metric D. So we have defined a metric on Rn. Uh, so this induces a topology. On the other hand, Rn also has the product topology. And the content of this theorem is that both these topologies are the same. Induces the product topology. So let us prove this here. Uh, so let us first show that every open set in the product topology 
is open in the metric topology. Okay. So, in order to do this, first consider sets of the the following sets. So, let you take any point in R space R n. Define this set to be uh, those y in R n such that sign for j line bounding in one and k. Right. So it is easily checked. that sets of this type form a basis for the product topology. So we will show that these sets are also open in the metric topology. Right? So let y be a point in this set. Right? So choose some delta positive and which is less than epsilon by k. Yeah. So that this ball around y j, this is a real number of delta, radius delta is contained, the ball around x j of radius epsilon, right. So, this should happen for j lying between 1 and k. So, in other words, we have x j here. So, for each each coordinate j, uh, this is this has length epsilon on our y j is a point over here, right. For each coordinate, for each j lying between 1 and k, right. That is because y is over here, okay. So, choose a delta uh, which lies between 0 and epsilon k. If you choose delta very small, then the delta neighborhood for all these yj's will completely lie inside this epsilon neighborhood of xj. Okay. Uh, so, we claim that the ball in the metric topology of radius delta around y is completely contained inside this set. Okay, so, let us just this, let us check this claim. So, suppose z is a point in this ball, right. So, this implies that uh, suprema, uh, so this implies that d of, so let us first write d of y comma z is strictly less than delta, but d recall this was the supremum over n d prime y n z n divided by n right. Uh, so, in particular this implies that d prime y n z n by n is strictly less than delta for all n and in particular also for j. line between 1 and k right. So, this implies that d prime y j z j is strictly less than j times delta which is less than equal to k times delta which is strictly less than epsilon for all j line between 1 and k right. And uh, so, this is the definition of this open set u. So, let us look at this definition u, right. So, this happens 
for zj so this implies that this ball d y comma delta is contained in u k epsilon right so we have this open set we have this basic open set u x bar or rather we have this set yeah u x bar k epsilon we chose a point y bar over here and there is an open neighborhood in the metric topology which is which contains this y and it is completely contained inside the set so we can cover this u x bar by open sets of this type and that will show that this u x bar k epsilon is also open in the metric topology right so this implies that q x bar k epsilon is open in the metric topology okay uh, now let us prove the converse yeah uh, so now next we show that any basic open set b d x epsilon is open in the product topology right so what we will do is so mm, we will show that there is a set so let me replace this by y we will show that there is a set u x k delta such that u x k delta is contained in so let us try to see why it is sufficient to prove this uh, claim so let's start so our aim is to show that this open set p d y epsilon this set is open in the product topology right so we can do that if given any point x bar in the set we can find a set u which is open in the product topology and completely contained inside this ball if we can do that then we can cover uh, this we can do that for every x in the set and we can take the union of those so that it will show that this b d y epsilon that's open in the product topology now in order to show in order to show this that uh, given any point x there is a uh, open set in the product topology which is completely contained inside this ball note that for this x there is an epsilon prime ball right this is bd x comma epsilon prime right which is completely contained inside this larger set and therefore we will show that there is a set of the type this type u x bar k delta which is contained in this smaller epsilon this epsilon prime ball right so that will prove the assertion so let's begin with the proof okay so choose k uh, such that choose k large such that 1 upon k is strictly less than epsilon by 2 right so then we claim that u x k epsilon by 2 is completely contained inside b d x bar comma epsilon so let us prove this so if z is a point in this set epsilon by 2 then what this implies is that d prime x j comma z j is strictly less than epsilon by 2 for all j lying between 1 and k right 
So this implies that d prime x j comma z j by j is strictly less than one upon j epsilon by two, which is less than equal to epsilon by two, right? For all j lying between one and k. Now, on the other hand, if j is strictly greater than k, then d prime x j comma z j by j is uh, less than equal to one upon j, which is because d prime is bounded by one, which is less than one upon k, which is strictly less than epsilon by two. Right. So therefore, when we take supremum over j, d prime x j comma z j by j, this is equal to the distance of x bar from z bar. Uh, this is less than equal to epsilon by 2, which is strictly less than epsilon. Right? So this implies, so we started with this z and we showed that the distance of z from x in the metric topology is uh, less than epsilon. So which implies that u x comma k comma epsilon by 2 is contained in p t x comma epsilon. Right? So this proves that. So thus we have proved this claim over here. So we have proved this claim. Right. So this proves that both the topologies, this proves that the metric topology and the product topology are equal. So this completes proof of the theorem. So we will end this lecture here.